<laughs> we started at 7.30 next summer. Everybody should be here by eight. Anyway, tonight we are going to go over the structure of the game and uh, discover what that looks like. So, um, but first what I want to do is just say, uh, Ryan, you did a kick-ass job, man. You look at his house, any other girls that's looking at this house, this is the, uh, he set up all the uh, technical pieces where we were able to uh, put this production together. So thanks again, man. Uh, we appreciate it. So the structure of the game is based off of two basic instincts. One is survival, and the other is replication. So without survival, there is no life. And uh, I can assure you that without the act of replication, there could be no life. So it's important that we get these basic instincts, this part of our life, handled to uh, continue in what we do, survival and replication. So what I want to do is first go over a man's um, value and then move into a woman's value. Uh, but before that, I have to interrupt it. I have to uh, answer. Anyone got one of these phones? Let's turn it on. So guys, what I'm, I'm putting my disclaimer out there right up front is that I do have license to brag on all of this material because none of it is mine. All right? So right here, is, is my Bible that I'm going to use, um, probably the Bible out there in the seduction community. Overall, is the mystery method. Uh, make sure you go get it. You know, that's the material that I'm, I'm going to be presenting to you this evening. So, I'm going to start with two basic instincts, survival and replication. Okay, This is the stick man, and this is the stick woman. She has a dress, and right in between there is heaven. Right in between here is what you have to offer, okay? So this is the way it goes, all right? So we're going to touch on those for two points. And the reason why this is so important is because if you don't get this part of your life handled, quote, nature will unapologetically lead your genes out of existence. If you don't learn to take action and attract beautiful women now. And that's why it's so important. So, we're going to go through and give you a clear mental picture and understanding of what the structure of the game looks like. Um, and if you get that piece out of this, then we've done uh, a good job. We'll also go in further detail on um, the attraction um, phase, which is the first part of seduction. Okay? Uh, and, in fact, I think it's the only part all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit here so that I don't miss any of the details for the man's um, value, which is really about uh, survival. Uh, you can show demonstrations of higher value um, and your ability to provide comfort, and safety, uh, and security uh, for the woman, then your stock goes up. She will compensate you for that. Okay. Her value, of course, is that if she comes in front of you and lifts up her shirt and shows you her tits, her value goes up. And it's that simple for us, and that's the other truth. All right. So, a man's attraction switches are set to respond to a woman's replication value. Only a minority respond to her survival value. If you're a man that responds to the sugar mama, then you have a feminine mind, okay? And they have therapy for that type of thing. Right. And this is not what we're going to cover that, but um, you need to uh, probably seek help. Okay, so you're... <laughs> and this, this is because we want to keep the whole life process going, all right? And we need men to be better men, all right? To be able to do what we do, and that's provide. So that keeps the balance. Okay, um, and a real woman will recognize 
that value in you and as a result be more attractive um, to you. Um, and that's what her response will be for you as you're speaking with her and interacting with her. Uh, so we're just, this, 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 this meeting here is to kind of awake to our masculine self. Right? That's um, one of the characteristics that you have to consciously sub-communicate or communicate to. Right? Now, a woman's switch um, is set to respond to a man's survival value. So this is the stick man, this is stick woman. Okay? And uh, these traits are genetically embedded within the female psychology. You know, it's programmed in their DNA to really look for uh, a man that can provide for them, okay? So sometimes you may see, like, some guy who you have no idea why he's with that hot girl, right? And you're trying to figure out, eh, I, I could seem like I could do that. And you wonder why you haven't been successful in really getting to that level and getting to 10. It's because we basically will attract the same level that we're at and until you're ready to see it and have it and receive it, it just won't come to you, right? And uh, when we get to that level, then we get those tens and we'll see it and they'll see us and that's the way it goes, <clears throat> all right? So you're probably sitting there wondering, what's the secret to the game, right? And I'm just going to tell you how I've come to understand the whole secret to the game. And maybe some of you guys even saw um, <coughs> the movie The Secret is going to sound really familiar to some of you because it says a lot uh, in such few words. Uh, basically, we are all working with one particular power and we all guide ourselves by one particular law. And the natural laws of this universe, of the game, are so precise, uh, they're the same ones that we use to build a spaceship, send a man to the moon, and time the landing within a precision of a fraction of a second. There's rules to the game, all right? There's rules to the game. And it doesn't matter where you're at. If you're gaming in, in uh, India, Stockholm, if you're gaming in Australia, New Zealand, New York, London, Toronto, or Montreal. We're all working with this, okay? One power, one law. And that power, that law, is attraction, all right? So the secret to the game really is about attraction, is the point that uh, we're making here, all right? And so that's our purpose tonight, is really to go over that first phase and uh, go over the structure of, uh, of what that looks like. So, attraction is an art. And so a lot of people say the seduction community, or a lot of people may say, or refer to it as, you know, pickup artists. But attraction is an art, okay? And it does take a lot of time and effort and patience, okay, to achieve a clear understanding. The way that it forms order within your mind and within your life is to have a clear picture of what it looks like and then know how to apply attraction, okay? So that when you um, set the conditions up for that uh, response that you're looking for, it's really not a choice because it operates by law. They have no choice in the matter because if you take that at a deep, deeper level, emotion is not a choice. They feel something about it. Have you ever heard a girl say, um, you know, it was just something about him. And, and then all of a sudden, I mean, we ended up, she'll tell the story, you know, we were on the couch, and all of a sudden he basically, you know, to speak caress, his dick was in. And you're like, you just gave it up. And you're the friend hearing about this, but you were interested in her? She's telling you about all of her uh, you know, sexual escapades and you know, you're stuck in the friend zone. Well, 
it's because of this that he was working with, okay? And if we can create a, a type of structured script, a pattern, or a routine that triggers her attraction switches, then you can ensure the success of opening up a set of attracting the girl or a girl of particular quality into a relationship with you, all right? So we're going to go over some of that stuff. If you take a look at the, the if you take a look at the um, presentation here, I'm going to go go back just one more to the initial. Um, that this is the structure of the game. You can see it on your notes too. Okay, and the structure starts with attraction, and then we move. If you see the M, it says move into comfort. Uh, you see a couple of arrows going up and down, but there's a, sometimes a bounce in a club that you're trying to achieve. Uh, and there's also, at some point, a time bridge, okay, that you are going to experience as you build comfort, okay? Uh, from there, uh, as that uh, increases, and trust increases, your value is going up, your stock is going up, you should be able to move her into the bedroom, okay, which is the seduction part, and uh, ultimately the end, end uh, game, okay. So Can that's all for a second. Go ahead. Basically, uh, a lot of people will start at the S, and that's kind of like uh, your player, your, hey, what's up, baby, you know, what are you doing later? Right? And they lose because you're starting at the end. Or you could start in the comfort and be like, try to be her friend, but then you're going to be just her friend. You, you need to start at the beginning because this A plus the C will equal the seduction. In the end, if you play this the right way, you know, she's going to seduce you. And it works consistently every time. Mm -hmm. So, if we look at some of the pitfalls to um, Ryan's point, that many guys will attempt to open a set with seduction. They start at the end, you know, and uh, the seducer is this, the person that might be come across uh, creepy. You know, he, he, the seducer, he could be a seducer, a real good seducer, but he, he's the one that would grab the girl's hand and pull her, pull him into, or pull her into. You know, he, he was creepy, you know, or you might make the mistake of starting off at that comfort stage where you're comfort building and you're just the nice guy, so you're stuck in the friendship zone. You have just sentenced yourself to hearing about all her troubles with other men. Um, and this is the category that most of us will fall in, okay? Most of you will fall in because it's natural to just fall into this, oh, I want to be friends with you, I, you know, that type of thing, right? without building any <clears throat> attraction value in the beginning. Uh, still others will go um, into you know, the right way, which is starting with attraction and enjoying where you're at. Right? And that's the success puzzle of it. You know, start with attraction. So, what we're going to do is, because a lot of times when we go out, and did you want to? If you want to okay. go through it. Okay. You so, might as well, since we're here. A1, if you guys turn your sheets to what that looks like, you'll see, um, you'll see it clearly attract, comfort, seduce, okay, at the top. So, A1. The man approaches a set, runs an opener, and reaches the social hook point. All right? Can you go into what that social hook point is? I'm going to have you clarification. Um, I, I can clarify to you that um, what you want to do when you go into the A1 is to, if the purpose is to initiate a chat, and it's only about 30 seconds long, okay? without conveying any um, interest. And in fact, you're going to take that one step further and disqualify yourself as a potential suitor, okay? And that's by throwing in some, 
as David D'Angelo would say, cocky but funny, or some nags. All right. Now, the social hook point, if you want to elaborate on that. Well, that's basically the point after you've already kind of, hey, did you guys see the fight outside? Yeah, blah, 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 right? And uh, at some point, the conversation will just cease if you haven't sparked any attraction. If you reach the social hook point, you'll know it because you're, you know, you're body rocking. You're kind of like, whatever, I'm just talking to this person. And then sooner or later, they're like, wait, I want this guy around. I kind of, he's kind of interesting. I want to see what's going on. And that's, once you reach that social hook point, you can head to the next level right there. I'm going to go with that. So basically, you're, you're hooking the, the woman into your frame somehow because you initiated attraction. You triggered her attraction switches. So the next part of attraction is the female to male attraction. The man demonstrates higher value wise simultaneously showing disinterest in a target. And that's where you're using the nags. She responds by giving you indicators <coughs> of interest. Okay? And there are some effective nags out there. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of them, but um, we're going to do that after we hit the A3. Let's move into A3. <coughs> So the man baits the woman to become more invested in the interaction, and then he rewards her efforts by showing indicators of interest. So at some point, like in the game, we have to recognize when the woman's biting on what our conversation is. Okay, when she's doing that, sometimes it doesn't even look like she's doing it. She might be teasing you. And or she might be testing for congruency in your game, the integrity of your game, by giving you shit tests. Okay? It may not appear that she's interested, but just as long as you guys are talking still, you're in the game. When you're not in that, in that moment, you know, and she just totally uh, <coughs> blows you off the set, then you're out in the game. But just as long as she's talking with you, she's entertained by that conversation. All right? And we need to figure out how to trigger those attraction indicators that much more so that she feels more comfortable, more safe in taking it to maybe a different or a higher level. So sometimes she might be nagging you and you might be getting offended and she's totally got you in her frame now. So, control that A2 stage because it's, it's shy, you know, it's, it's coy, and sometimes it looks tricky. If you know those, that's great. If you don't know them yet, you need to have those memorized because you need to be able to escalate step by step. I mean, when a woman says, I want a man to lead, not just like leading like, hey, we're going miniature golfing today, we're going ice skating, it's, it's leading her step to step from <coughs> the initial eye contact to sex. And uh, if you don't know that, you're going to end up kind of getting stifled in the middle of the situation, you know. And so saying, where, where am I? But if you know these steps, if you're, if you're getting last minute resistance, then you know, you're, you know you're at that step. If you know she's not really connecting to you, then you're still in A3. You know, you need to move back uh, and roll off, go back and demonstrate higher value, and repeat the process, and then keep escalating. You know, it, it is a game you play level by level. And, and, and just to talk about the last minute resistance, because it seems to be a word that keeps coming up here. You know, when you see that, and, and she says something like, you know, I think we're, you know, I'm taking this a little bit too far. And you just say, yeah, I think so too. And you keep going. That's one tip. Because if you say anything else, you're going to give her traction. And she, she, she start thinking about it. But she's already there, so we'll cover that some other time. Um, so the game is won by knowing how to open a set, because the truth is that the woman, a woman of quality, is very, very rarely alone. So you open that set, uh, I can probably assure you that the next girl that you date is 
friends. You want to be with some friends. Okay. And um, we need to know how to open the friends up so that they feel like they are better having known you. And if you can get that response from a set, then you know, you're you kind of led into the family or into the social circle. So we, we just come up with canned material, right? Some canned material that you know from other people's experience just work for some reason. And I say that reason is it's by law. People will respond positively to it. So um, the mystery, uh, mystery method is a good place to find. Uh, I, I think some people may think it's uh, old and tired and everyone knows about it, but let me tell you, not everyone watched VH1. Not everyone is engaged in what we are engaged in. Some people are looking for this, some people need it, um, but not everyone is aware that it's available to them, especially the woman that we're talking to. She's probably not studying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Really, you know, it's, it's probably. You know, I, heard, I heard it was on the news a while sure. back, a couple of years ago. Obama made a speech yesterday. I don't know what the hell he just said. And he says stuff on the news. I'm sure that not everyone's looking at it. Right. And at that particular at time. At that particular time. Right. Nor do we always remember what we hear. Okay. So. This material works, is what I'm saying. And she's probably never heard of it before. That's what I mean. Especially if you like put your personality into it. You know, um, she's never heard it the way you're going to give it to her. And I hope she's never had it the way you're going to give it to her in other different ways, too. And if she has heard it before, you just say, like, hey, yeah. Who's going to say that? <laughs> and she's going to be like, you know, just throw her up. And then, you know, cut that thread and start a new routine. These are the ones that I use. They're pretty effective because they respond to the way we respond to uh, We could go on and on with some of these. Uh, one that I'm going to do that I, I, sh I probably should use, and I used when I started the game. I used it, and it works. But I haven't used it lately. But I was listening to uh, Swing Cat and this uh, material. Say, for instance, she asks, and he got it. I think he got it in this room, more or less, right? But say, for instance, she accidentally elbows you by mistake. She, she touches you. And that's always going to happen if you're doing it right you now, some key moment. And then you say something like, honey, this shit ain't for free. I'm not just a sausage with legs, you know? And then, like, that'll cost you $50. You know what I'm saying? So she, she looks at that like, sausage with legs? This shit ain't for free. What are you talking about? That's going to cost me fifty dollars. <laughs> like, it—it's almost like—is this going to work? When I did it the first time, is this going to work? So she'll go like, ah. and uh, the first couple of times I did it, it didn't really work that well because when she said, ah, I was like, oh, you know, she was like somebody stabbing me because I was thinking, okay, this is, you know, I was getting all excited like, yeah. yeah. I, I got the first line out, I said it. But then, uh, you're kind of camera shot too. But then, she doesn't know how to feel about that. And this is the part I didn't get when I was starting the game. So what I was supposed to do, when she says, oh, like that, she, she, she's really trying to process what the fuck just happened, right? What I should have done is actually give her a frame to work with um, so that she could process that um, come up correct okay and I should have said something like oh I understand you're broke but you can make it up to me later see now I'm throwing in that attraction there that I know later on she's going to remember especially if I say this is about time for you to make up for Huh? Okay. That, that type of thing. And she's, yeah, I, let her come up with how she's going to make it up to you. 
It could be a number of ways. Maybe you got our number already. Maybe you didn't. Maybe she can make it up by giving you our number. You know, that type of thing. So it's effective if you know how to use it. And I would suggest everyone commit that one to memory because it's, it works. I, I used it again for the first time in like two years um, uh, this past Sunday. And it worked. So the toolkit is just simple, guys. When we go and approach women, come up with three solid routines. Their routines, you got to know how to tell a story. I know it doesn't come natural because I've been there. And if you're not emotional about it, willingness to emote, you know, get engaged, she's not going to feel it. So practice these stories so that when that 10 comes around, you're all, you've already you're doing what you've always done. That's the, that's the only way that we're going to be able to keep the, the plot going. And the, the plot isn't really a plot because eventually it becomes you. But on this act one, you're going to see three storylines right, on this act. I'm going to do them as good as I can. All right? And then you're going to see how it pulls it together, where you can continue on. And she's feeling real good about herself because she's in contact with you. So she's building, you're building that attraction. She's jumping through hoops for you, you know, A2, you know, female to male interest. She's like, well, you say one thing, that's interesting. Well, that's interesting. You say another thing, that's interesting. But two or three, four things, you become interesting. It's no longer that's interesting. the desired response that we want to And it feels good. And then when you move on to the other stages, it's that much more comfortable because you don't have to come up with shit. It just rolls out of you, man. Right? So anyway, <clears throat> act one. So you say, you know, do you have a good imagination? It's just saying something. Oh yes. You do? I want you to think of a number between one and four. Don't tell me yet. Think of a number between one and four. Um, uh, so I could read it line by line because I'm probably going to get lost in it, but I'm going to also try to put in the emotional value to it. Um, but we, we start between one and four because that's simple um, and that's easy, right? And then you say something like, yeah, I said it, that's simple, and that's easy. We're going to start right there. And then, um, don't say it yet. Just think of the number 21 and 4. The first one that pops in your head. Yeah. So while you're telling that story, you know, think of the number between 1 and 4. Don't tell me. Now, what I just did there, psychologically speaking, 1 and 4. Don't tell me. I, I, I did that at 3. Most people are going to think and find the reason that. But one and four. Right now, I have a 25% chance just because it's between one and four. One out of four sets that you open, you're probably going to get three. And she's going to go, oh, wow, this guy really knows how to read my mind. You already get her. You know, you already get her at a certain level. Okay? So, I'm curious about something. Before we get to that, is is there more to you than meets the eye? Yeah. And then she would say, yeah, I would say so. I mean, don't get a big head. There's a lot of beautiful people out there, especially in Vegas. Beauty is common. And then you might say, um, would you agree? You know, and then you get agreement from our compliant from our course. You know, that's really rare, though. What's really rare is, you know, great personality, um, positive outlook, a great attitude, you know, but then you might search for agreement as well, as, you know, at that point. And she, she, and running these threads, I normally run them like one or two at a time because I, I, I do a natural approach, okay, and I, I, I throw in whatever comes to my mind, but at that point, she's going to say, um, when you're going to say, are you thinking of that number? You might go back and loop to the first one. She might say yes. And you'll say, um, focusing? Yes. And then you'll say three. 
And this just said, yeah. All right? Um, what I'm going to do to make this particular and, set. And, and if she doesn't, remember, I'll come up with a better answer, like all of a sudden, like, well, see, that proves that neuro linguistic programming doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And they cut the thread and change the material. Let's go back. I'm going to have one of you guys, because I want to get the full effect of this, and I'm not getting the full effect of it. You're going to play the girl. I'm going to play the guy. All right? Who's my guinea pig? And all you're going to do is say what it says on your script. Play the part. Right? And I'm going to play my part, because I, I, I can't keep playing back and forth parts. All right? So and, and that's why it might sound disjointed. So we're going to start at Act 2. We already covered Act 1. Do you have a good imagination? And she says yes. And then you say you do. And then you say pick a number between 1 and 4. Stack. Okay. Now we're going to start at Act 2. And I need Houston to help me out. You always help me out in the field, so you need to help me out here. All right. Hold on. This is the insurance part right here. Nice. When it happens, when he comes in late next time, they're going to play me on the big screen. All right. Well, sure. So what we'll do is, um, right. somebody can, yeah, I'm going to stand on this side, the survivor side, the stick person side, the male side, and then the uh, replication side, you know, sort of, so he's just playing the part, and we're actors in this part, we're going to do it live. We're starting with act two, uh, ready, begin. I'm curious about some, something before we get to that. Is, is there more than you than ECF? Uh, I would say so. I mean, don't get a big head. There's a lot of beautiful people around us, right? I mean, especially in Vegas, but beauty is common here, you know? Would you not agree? Uh, of course. But you know what's really rare now? Uh, what's really rare? Are uh, the, the things that are you still thinking about? Yeah. Um, are you? Yeah. Focusing? Yeah. Uh, three. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, want to try that again? A different number? This time from one to ten. Snap at seven. One to ten. Snap at seven. Now, you got it? <clears throat> yeah. Nice. Oh, by the way, have you ever been to Hollywood sign? Have you ever been down at the base of it? Uh, yeah. Have you climbed up to the top of it? No, I just drove there. Well, I went to the to, to the Hollywood slide with a lovely girl, pre-selection at the time, and, and you know how you're not supposed to cross the fence? Well, if you plan on you know, doing it, bring the girl uh, with some nice shoes. It takes about 40 minutes. So when you're up there, you can see all of Hollywood in one eye shot. And it really gives you clarity that a lot of actresses really should have with regards to the Hollywood puzzle. You can see all of it in just a blink of an eye. You got that number in your head? Do, do you got yeah. That? yeah. Yeah. Seven. Correct. Oh, nice. You, you see, the, 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 what's really great is a great outlook, a great personality, a great energy. That's rare. You got two of the three of those. So in that act, guys, you see a lot of conversation going on, a lot of engagement. She's actually um, interested in what you have to say. Uh, and he ran three separate routines. His Hollywood sign story, his ESP story that he could guess what number she was thinking of. Um, then his beauty is common qualifier thread that he ran through, if there are more to you than meets the eye. Getting her to show you indicators of interest in A2 because now she's trying to tell you what's so special about her. Now, the reason why we're framing it that way is because immediately she's giving you value. And so, by law, she wants to feel good about herself. So she's going to jump through some hoops. She's already, within three minutes, jumping through hoops for you. So, that's like the game right there, kind of like a laser shot of how attraction is. Like a lot of the tests that you might get is, uh, 
you hear this all the time, I have a boyfriend. You might say, you know, oh, you know what, I just went from stranger to boyfriend within a matter of two minutes. <laughs> this is moving way too fast for me. I'm not sure if this is going to work out. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing it in there. I'm not really giving her too much traction. She will come back with something like, I'm not talking about you or, you know, or, or something like that. Then you have to think on your feet some, depending on her response. But what it is, is, is a very witty, smart statement that shows that you're socially intelligent. Okay? And it's a way to disarm the I have a boyfriend. Because she may not have a boyfriend. Only that she has a boyfriend when she's talking to you. It's the bitch show. No woman wakes up saying, God, I hope I don't get swept off my feet today. Now she might say, this is a really bad time for me. Or something like, I just need some space. Or my personal thing, I'm really into my career right now. Do you believe that? Please don't. Because neither does she. You know why? Because she's not being honest with you. She's lying. It's really not a bad time for her. She doesn't need any space. She may be into her career, but what she's really saying is, get away from me now. I'm not attracted to you. Or possibly, try harder, stupid. Well, as men, we have to properly discern the difference between the two. Is she asking you to try harder? Because you know she gets this all the time, or she, you know, so you got to. So sixty percent of all communication, he goes into this story about where the communication comes. So bottom line is, only ten percent of communication is coming out of her mouth. All right, so you have to become intuitive to what she's really saying and what she's really communicating to you. Right, connect with her on that level. So, so please understand, she's going to lie to you at first. Like when you go out gaming, she's going to lie to you at first. She's a nice person and she doesn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> you know? But, so what else is she going to say? Really? Alright? Um, she doesn't know you yet. Right? So our job is to want you to get to the point. To the, get, to the point of the get day game, you know, to get her to want to know you more. Um, that's it. Thank you, Scott. Hey, man, I, I thank hands. everybody for, I mean, I thank Ryan for uh, inviting us out and letting us into his home, starting up the, you know, the community. Uh, really, uh, I've been at it a few years, a couple of guys have been at it a few years. Um, it's uh, something that I, I'm fascinated by, and uh, you know, I just hope to learn a lot more from uh, some of the other guys. You know, day game, something that I get better at. You know, uh, night game, when done correctly, I'm pretty effective at it. Like, I think my shit is tight. It's on, it's on. Anyways, to see or check, or just like, let's just do a couple of like, just. Human interaction examples. So face me real quick. I'm on the now, jib now. How comfortable do you feel with me being, say, four feet away? No problem. No problem, right? No problem. I come up to you like this. No, I got a little problem. A little, little problem, right? Now imagine how girls feel when you come up to them and say, hey, yeah. let me get your opinion on something. Right. They're like, shit, this guy is like on my shit. He's closing on me. I have no way of escaping this because it's like, okay, now for, for to get out of this, you have to do something like, okay, um, kind of push you aside or move out of the way or whatever. So once a girl feels physically closed in, She's gonna mentally close out on you too. She's not gonna to want to listen to what you have to do. She's kind of like, be okay, all right, get out of here. You creep me the fuck out, right? But if I were to say something like, hey, look over there, you're gonna orient your body wherever, right? I'm gonna stand right next to you. Now imagine, now see, I'm only like four inches away from you, but how comfortable does this feel? No problem, no right? No problem. Because I'm not facing you. Right. So if you go up to a girl and you want to talk to her, without even coming up to her like front on like this, again, she's gonna creep the fuck out. We're up to her, off to the side and be like, so, let me ask you a question, or whatever it is, or hey, check out these guys over there. 
whatever it is, you're already engaging her, and she knows that if she wants to turn away, she can. All she has to do is go like this, and boom, she's out of the conversation. You give her that space, that comfort. Part of like giving her comfort is giving her an escape route. If you're in a, in a corner with her, and you gotta like physically corner it, even if she does dig you, it's like she has nowhere to go, and that, right. that yeah. instinct's gonna kick in of, shit, if he wants something from me that I wanna give him, I have nowhere to go, that kind of thing. Um, also, say, say you're facing this way or whatever, right? Let me put your face that way. You're talking to a girl, so he's like somebody else talking, you know, saying here, you yakking back and forth or whatever. Okay. If I'm gonna come up to you, like from the side like this, you guys can spot me from your peripheral. You right. can see me coming from miles away, and you know exactly, I'm gonna come for you, I'm gonna fucking hit on you, I'm gonna be like a creeper and everything else, right? right? However, if I come up to the side, not a whole lot of space to demonstrate this, but say if I'm gonna walk a circle, right? I'm gonna, they're standing right here, right. I'm gonna make a circle right past them, and have the bite language as of, I'm gonna keep going, right? So I'm gonna walk by and be like, Take a double take, stop, look back, be like, hey guys, let me ask you a question. You have the option to turn to me, just a little bit. Right. If you don't, that's cool too, but you have the option to or not to. But you always see my body language. I'm rocking out already. Right. I have the option to just move away, and you'll feel that too. It's like, he's not here to hit on me, he's not here to get some from me, he's ready to walk away, which gives him, again, comfort. Let me ask you a question. Da 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 da. You know, and then you go, oh, by the way, how do you guys know each other? I'm already taking that, that step away, like I'm already ready to move away and everything. You can do that physically, or you can do it verbally and say, hey guys, real quick, I only have a second, it's boys night out, I shouldn't be talking to your girls, but let me ask you, da 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 you go into your opinion opener, whatever the fuck it is, right? But give them that comfort, that's based on my girls, you know, the difference between being a creeper and not a creeper mm -hmm. is giving them that option to walk away. You know, it's funny how when you get into a relationship, all the things, all those nice, sappy things you do are cool when you're in a relationship, but they're creepy when you don't know the girl, writing her poetry, you know, like, Giving her flowers, all that shit. When you don't know the girl, it's creepy. Yeah, like, if you don't know her, it's like, oh, I'd be so sweet. But being a creeper is like the last thing you want to be labeled as, because that destroys your game, destroys the game of whoever you're with, and you know you're going to be fucking labeled by those girls forever and ever and ever. Here's a creeper. Now, the bar and club may not be a big <laughs> deal, but if you're in a social circle, and everybody knows each other, and you get introduced to a new friend or whatever, if she tells her friends he's a creeper, you're already out with all those friends. Um, let's see what else can we do. You're all right. I, I, I don't no, it's it's an, 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 in the A1, in the actual A1 phase. Yeah. And like, that's why they have that three second rule where they want you to, uh, you know, approach the lady immediately because if you wait too long and you're hovering around and you're looking at it, then you creep them up. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you know, you close yourself up. Good point. You, yeah. The worst thing you do is be one of those hover guys because, again, girls, even though they're talking to each other, they have a peripheral vision. They're smart about that shit. They can see and smell you from miles away. So if you're one of those guys who are like, you know, trying to like get to her, but you don't know how you're going to approach it because they're busy or they're facing this way, they're talking on the phone, they're taking a drink. You're hovering over them, they can smell that and they can sense that you have no confidence. You're just breaking to the side, like, hey guys, what's up? That kind of thing. I have a question. What's up, now, man? At that point, in that situation, would you wait for her to kind of separate herself from the friend and then kind of approach her? That I happens? would say never, ever, ever approach a girl by herself because if she's by herself at a bar or a club, if she's a beautiful girl by herself, she's working. No, 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 no. Oh. So, uh, she was with her friends, yeah. and she was in interacting and engaging with the conversation. And then let's say she went to the bar to go get a drink, but mm -hmm. that was your target. So now you have an open window to kind of go over there and, and go to her friends. I would say even better yet, go yeah. to the friends. While she's getting a drink, go to the friends, bullshit with them, neg the shit out of them, or just have a good time or whatever, because you know you're not interested in them. Everything just flow, you can make an ass of yourself, whatever it is. Right. Get, their trump, get their comfort, get their trust. You don't even know that there's a cute girl with them, but you know you're waiting for her, right? You're in there, make friends with the two girls. The friend comes in, they're like, oh my god, they do all their little, how you been, all that bullshit, right? And you say, hey, don't be rude, introduce me, introduce me to your friend. You know, it's a polite thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of neg them at the same time. They're like, oh, oh, this is Sarah. I'd be like, nice to meet you, Sarah. Anyway, as I was saying, da 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 And you kind of ignore it. She's like, what, this guy just showed up out of nowhere, he's occupying my friends? What the fuck, what's up with him? You know, <laughs> he's not even paying attention to me. I'm the hottest one of the bunch. Why is he not paying attention to me? That's what you want. You want to give him that idea of, yeah. You know, there's, I'm not interested in you. That's where the, that's where the next come in, you know? Um, you know, one of the next that, in the mystery method, he, the guy, mystery, paints his nails black, right? So one of the things that he says is, um, you know, too bad I'm gay, or you'd still be my type. So you give him the neg, right? I'm not interested in you, I'm a gay, I'm, I'm a gay dude, right? Even though you're not, but just let him think that for a second. I think that one's genius. That is genius, because <laughs> later on, you give him the, the antidote, and you say, actually, it's my big brother who's gay, not me, these are black nails, not pink. Right, <laughs> so there's there's things you can work into these things, um, and it's it's hard if you're not that kind of guy that's naturally witty or naturally funny or naturally like quick on your feet or whatever. It's hard because you'd be like they'll say shit to you and you'd be like, 
uh, 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 think of a good line, think of a good line. And by the time you think of it, it'll be five minutes too late. The girl's already walked off and you are fucking lost the set or whatever. But if you just go into these situations over and over and over again, you always have that better thing to say. You're just like, boom, great, okay, all right. Or she'll tell you something like, the nice guy thing, like the, the fallacy of the nice guy, is you'll bend over backwards to make her like you, right? Which, yeah, you want her to make to, to like you, but there's other things to go along with that. So she says something like, you're real cocky. The nice guy will say, oh no, I'm not, I'm, I'm really a nice guy. That's the nice guy supplementation, right? You supplement to the girl, trying to explain to her, no, I'm really a nice guy, I'm not, I'm not cocky, right? If she tells you, well, you're cocky, you go, thanks for noticing. Anyway, you go to the next set. You, you know, you like, you, you say, yep, that's, that's who I am. Thanks for noticing, and on to the next thing, without even giving her like a chance to make a comment about it. Because again, that's a test to see if you back down. If you back down from that, if you throw a funny thing at her, yeah. like nigger and shit, then she goes, you're cocky, and you're like, oh no, I'm not. She knows you fucking lost the game. She knows you're not congruent with who you are, and you have zero value to her, because you kind of put up this whole facade, this face, or whatever. You're like, meet a guy, or even a girl, that their body language says one thing, but the things that they say says a totally different thing. You're like, wait a minute, something's yeah. not right here. You know, you get those guys that, Peacock, they shit on themselves. Peacock and like dressing like lavishly and everything else, but they come in all timid, shy, and you're like, what the hell? I thought you're like this fucking powerhouse of male ego, and you come in all fucking shy and shit. What the hell? You know, something's not right here. <laughs> well, you see those party girls, right? They fucking dance on the table, do all the shit. You talk to them, you see that they're fucking shy and they have their own fears and their own worries and their own like these these limiting beliefs and everything. You're like, what the fuck happened to you? You're supposed to be all cool and cocky and shit, and now this happens. Something isn't quite right here. With body language, you can like, while you're talking to them, be like, you're funny. You know, just kind of tap them, just lightly with, with the back hand on the shoulder. Don't start like grabbing them all over, because girls get really weirded out with touch. Unless you're kind of comfortable with them, don't start touching them in places they don't want to be touched. Like even the arms is a little much, but just like back of the hand, pat them on the shoulder, you're funny. Anyway, and you go on to your next thing. If they, like say you poke them, right? Say you're talking to the girl or whatever, you're talking to, you know, the new target, and you just kind of go, you kind of poke her like this. Her natural reaction would be like, what the hell? And she pokes you back. And you go, no, you don't poke me. Don't touch me. Right? You kind of say it in that serious but not serious kind of, you know, like tone of voice and everything. Don't touch me. And she goes, oh, okay. Then you poke her again, right? And she goes, like, well, what the hell, right? She's totally fucking confused as to, is it cool? Is it not? Am I da da da? And she's like, she'll like, like not know what to do. She'll like lift, your hand, lift her hand up against you and you'll be like, um, what's the line? It's like, you know, she lifts her hand and be like, um, you want to take this outside? I will take you down right now. Let's go. And she'd be like, oh. and if she's game, if she's like into it, and she's like, you know, I got that sassy attitude, she'll go with you, be like, all right, let's go, let's yeah. go. I'm like, all right, cool, come on. Um, oh, one of the other things I like doing is um, to build like relationship, even with a total random stranger, right? You have a girl here and a girl there, you start yakking with them, and you have a little bit of rapport, you're like, oh, um, by the way, uh, we're married. She'd be like, what? It's like, yeah, we got married just now. Say, I do? I do? Mm -hmm. I do? Perfect, we're married. All right, you start, you keep talking, right? She'd be like, oh, okay. Then we'll say something stupid or you do nothing or whatever the fuck it is and you're like, oh, by the way, uh, we're getting a divorce in about five minutes. This relationship is not working out with me anymore. Uh, come by tomorrow, pick up your shit. Um, by the way, that dog of yours has been shitting all over the carpet too, so take him with you, all right? Um, you sign a prenup, so you're not going to get a fucking cent, all right? Anyway, of course, tune down the, the cussing because I like throwing the F word out there and everything. But, you know, I talk to girls, you know, obviously tune, turn it down a little bit. But get that, that conspiracy theory of, okay, we're not married. You can even, like, play it out. Hey, you're my new wife now. You know, be like, but what? It's like, you're my wife, you're my mistress. Cool. All right. So you kind of do your thing. You can even fucking dismiss them. Be like, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Go where I, you know, go away or whatever. And you talk to some other girls and you pick up some other chicks or whatever. Bring it back over. Be like, oh, hey, by the way, um, she's my new wife and we're getting a divorce. And you start talking to her, right? Just totally like, bam, you're done, you're out, over there. So you'd be thinking, like, what the fuck? You know, like, first we get married, I thought you liked me. <laughs> you know, now I was getting a divorce. He's talking to this other girl. And the second you see it, if you're a girl, the second you see a guy with other girls, it's a, it's a, it's on. You know, it's a jealousy factor that comes yeah. into play. You know, girls, what was how's it go? Guys want beautiful girls, and girls want guys with beautiful girls. That's the thing. It's the whole thing. There's like, there's species of animals uh, like birds and shit where they've proven it, uh, empirically speaking, that if you take a male bird of whatever fucking species species it was. And if, if he already has like two or three like female birds around him, more birds, female birds will flock to him. Um, they even took like a single male bird, put a like a replica of, exactly like a stuffed female bird, put it next to him, and all of a sudden these girls start flocking to him. It's just like, what the fuck, wouldn't you think that'd be the other way around? Because guys, 
we used to grow up the guy, we're like, eh, she's already taken, whatever, you know? No big deal. But girls, it's just, it's it's funny how it's, it's so fucking different and yeah. the other way around. Now this thing over here, the, how you were saying how, you know, attraction, like physical attraction, a guy would look a girl up and down, and in the first two seconds say, yes or no. Right. You know, if she's in that no zone, there's really not a whole lot she can do to get herself back in that yes zone. Whereas when a girl looks at a guy, she looks him up and down, and she goes, no, but maybe later. If he comes over here, he shows me he's got value, he's got he's got drive, he's got ambition, he's the leader of men, he's got other girls in his life, he's got shit going on. Yeah, maybe then. Because, like you were saying, you go to the mall, you see a beautiful girl with an ugly ass dude, you're like, what the fuck, right? You never go the other way around. You never see a hot dude with an ugly girl. Never, ever, ever, right? But that girl, that hot ass girl, see something in him that you don't have. You may be, the, you may be fucking, you know, Tom Cruise or Kevin Costner, or whoever the fuck is hot these days, right? But that, those looks will only get you into the door. It's like a resume. The resume will only get you through the door to the interview. The interview is where it's going to count, where you can make it or break it. Same with the looks. Looks will get you through the door, but if you're totally botched, if you're a good looking dude but have no game, you're out. You're done. 